So good morning, good afternoon and good evening to everybody who's connected to this 17th Global Masterclass of L'Oréal. Uh, my name is Stephanie Messner and I'm the Talent Acquisition Director for L'Oréal in France. And I'm very, very pleased to welcome you all today. And we have a very special guest with us who will be introduced in a second. But before that, let's just have a think why we actually running these masterclasses. We have been doing that for a while now. And we wanted to, to share with you the, the aim of doing so today again. It is because we want to create a connection with the youngsters around the globe. We want to inspire you with our stories and we want to give you some very special insights firsthand from our very special guest speakers. And that leads me to introducing Vincent Boinet, the president of L'Oréal Travel Retail, who is here with us today and who will introduce us into the fantastic world of travel retail. Over to you, Vincent. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you. And, uh, and uh, my turn to say good morning, good afternoon or good evening, depending where you are. Uh, my name is Vincent Boinet, and uh, as you as you have seen just on the slide before, I'm the president of Travel Retail for L'Oréal, and I'm also a member of the executive committee. Um, I'm going to share with you a presentation, um, a, a very short one, uh, and then we will we will exchange, and I will try to answer uh, all your questions uh, if I can. But let me share first a presentation. Um, I trust. Uh, you are all seeing my screen. Uh, it's, um, it's a short presentation to, to talk about beauty for all travelers. Uh, but uh, just before I'm talking about beauty for all travelers, uh, I'm going to tell you where I'm coming from and what I've been doing. Um, to make a long story short, I mean, on this slide, it's a, uh, it's a way to summarize 30 years at L'Oréal. I've been working for 30 years at L'Oréal, so as you can see, I'm a long-serving executive. And here, uh, these images are telling you uh, what I did. Um, I started at a time when, uh, in France, we were doing our military service right after being graduated. And I did it, and I, as you can see on the photo, I've chosen one of the most exotic places on Earth. I went to Brussels. Uh, and I did it in finance because corporate finance was uh, the major I did at school uh, when I did my uh, high school in Paris. Uh, it was a management school in Paris. Then from Belgium, I mean, I, uh, I started at L'Oréal. And as you can see, I started at L'Oréal Travel Retail. At the time, we called it Duty Free. Um, and I was a young area manager for Lancôme in the UK. And this is where I started. Uh, I did it for many years, uh, and uh, and then after after travel retail, I joined uh, uh, what we called the DMI. Uh, it's the brand, uh, and and it was Lancôme, where in Paris we created the brand for the development worldwide, and I was in charge of the international development. And after Lancôme, I went uh, back to the French domestic market, uh, and uh, and I did Cacharel and Biotherm. I was a general manager for a while uh, and uh, and right after I came back uh, and it was my first comeback in travel retail to look after the luxury division uh, worldwide in travel retail and um, to be honest I mean you know at L'Oréal we want to stay a bit long in the job to really make a transformation and this one I was I was not uh, very long in the job I even I did not even stay two years in the job and I moved to Japan I've been asked to run the luxury division of L'Oréal in Japan, and I did it from 2007 till the end of 2011, and it was absolutely a fantastic experience, uh, both personally and professionally. Then in 2012, I came back to France, uh, and I've been working at the luxury division of L'Oréal uh, for some years uh, to look after the global retail. It was, um, in a way, all the métier around the products and the brands uh, to be developed worldwide, and I also participated to the digital transformation of the division. And it was in 2015, I mean, I've been asked to come back to Travel Retail, but this time to build a L'Oréal Travel Retail with all the division, from luxury to mass market, from dermal cosmetic to air salon division. And this is where I stand today, and this is why I've got the pleasure to, uh, to talk about uh, this uh, fantastic universe. But before getting into this universe, since we are talking to many students today, 
Um, I wanted to insist on that one because 30 years at L'Oréal, as you can see, it's seven different business units. And within some business units, uh, I've, I've been doing different jobs. So this is uh, what you can see a formidable opportunity to live a, a, an incredible adventure. But uh, but I'm here to, uh, to, um, to open up the doors of travel retail a little bit more. Uh, so first, if you agree, I'm going to just to give you a bit of history uh, uh, about travel retail, because very often people are asking, but when was the first travel retail door open and where and why? Um, and actually at L'Oréal, we opened this activity 40, 45 years ago, but the, the, the channel, the channel is itself uh, was created 75 years ago. And the very first uh, duty-free store opened in Shannon, in Ireland, in Ireland. In, it was in uh, 1947. Why in, in Shannon? It was, it's because it was uh, the get, uh, the last stop before the US uh, where, when the planes were, were, uh, were flying to the US. And this is the very first duty-free shop. And, and we, here you see some photos, and this is this ID. Uh, from duty free shops, small doors in 1947 in to big, big duty free malls uh, today. And this is a picture of uh, L'Oréal Paris uh, in Hainan, the famous Hainan in the famous Aitong Bay shopping center. So, this is the transformation that happened over the past 40, 70 years, and it's very significant and it made a market that is a robust and solid market of a bit more than 80 million euros or 86 billion US. Uh, and within this market, and here it's the numbers of 90, of 2019, so before the COVID, and I'll get back to the COVID season and, and what happened in a minute. And within this market, what we have to, to keep in mind is that the beauty category is by far the number one category in travel retail worldwide. Why? Uh, for many reasons. First, the accessibility of the category in a way, uh, but also because of the profile and the customers we have. But I'll get back to that in a minute. And that's why it's a fantastic uh, playground for, uh, for the beauty brands around the world. But you can see that other categories are also very well positioned and you see it when you travel. Wine and spirits, fashion, tobacco, uh, watch and jewelry. But you see that, I mean, the key categories are fragrances and fashion. Wine and spirit and tobacco are declining a bit in travel. So, but what's important uh, is to, uh, to assess and to, to acknowledge that uh, last year, 2020, with the COVID and with the, the traffic uh, that was almost on hold everywhere in the world, uh, the market uh, has been changing very fast. 38 billion in 2019, 27 in 2020. But you, are, you might say, I mean, it's not going to, it's not a big drop, but it's actually a significant one because we have to differentiate the Asian world and North Asia in particular with Korea and Hainan in particular, and the Western world on the other end. Um, and one was uh, declining reasonably, and the other one was collapsing. And the Western world was more into the minus 60 and minus 70 last year because of the drop of traffic. So that is why, I mean, behind our uh, business, we have uh, distribution channels and, uh, and we were a market dominated by airports. Uh, and it was almost half of the market worldwide. But actually, this travel retail market has shifted in 2020 because of the COVID. It became a downtown market. Why? Because of Hainan. And it was a big shift. I'll get back to it in a minute and I will tell you where is this little island and why is it so big today? But as you can see, it's a market dominated by airport and downtown. E-commerce is coming and e-commerce uh, is very important in North Asia. Uh, because in the borders, we can do live streaming, we can do pre-ordering, we can really activate customers through digitals. And then you have the smaller part of the activity, airlines, cruises and ferries, and also the border shops that you have at the borders between some countries. Travel retail market, uh, as you can see, uh, because of the COVID crisis, has shifted towards Asia. Today, I mean, almost 90% of the market is in Asia. It will rebalance, but I mean, even though uh, it will rebalance, you can see at the bottom that in 2019, the market was already in Asia. 
One, because the Chinese shoppers, like in many luxury activity, because it's mainly a luxury activity, uh, are uh, the dominant shopper in, in our market. And it's almost 50% of the purchase. It was almost 50% of the purchase in 2019. Why? And, uh, and it's all the more important today. Why? Because, I mean, the big shift of, time, of, of, the, two, of the COVID period were, first, the rise of Ainan, and I'm going to give you just one number to keep in mind, because it's always very interesting to have the big numbers on top of our head. 90 million Chinese are going to visit Ainan this year, slightly more, uh, but 90 million. Uh, when you just compare this number to a uh, a very solid uh, developed market in the world where you have between 80 and 90 million inhabitants, uh, you realize what it means. And, and I think it's very important because very, very often we tend to forget the numbers, but it's absolutely massive. And the second big uh, shift and dynamic created by the COVID, and you probably saw it in your uh, daily life uh, and your own experience, is uh, the rise of e-commerce, or should I say the digital uh, capabilities in our industry. And I'll get back to that in a minute because it's very much related to customer behaviors. But what's important is uh, that we at L'Oréal remain extremely confident. Why? Because, I mean, the fundamentals of our industry are remaining very solid. First, because it's very well balanced between uh, travelers from industrial countries and emerging countries. It's true, it was true yesterday, it's gonna be true tomorrow. And we see the same mega trends everywhere. Chinese, millennials, middle class in the world, low cost development. And, um, and here again, giving you some numbers, uh, just for you to know what tomorrow might be. Um, we might have some Chinese connected today, uh, but um, I love to remind everybody that, I mean, do you know how many passport holders we have in China? Uh, it's in the region of 80 million people, and you know the population. And, uh, and for you to know, a mature country, uh, in a mature country, around 40% of the population hold a passport. So you see the potential. The millennials. Millennials everywhere, and uh, and as uh, many of you today, I'm sure uh, you know that they are craving for traveling, sustainably, but traveling. Middle class, middle class. I mean, by 2030, I mean we will add around 200, sorry, 250 million middle class people in the world, and this middle class is eager to travel. And last, it's I, I'm talking about it because it's. Uh, we have a, a, a big trend of solid national carriers, but we also have a very, very important trend on low cost. And it's important because, I mean, especially for regional redevelopment, low cost carriers are very important. But what's important as well in our business is the shift that we see in customer behaviors, especially after the COVID. And this is why I wanted to share with you this, uh, this slide, because I think it's very meaningful for all of us, uh, and especially, I'm sure, for many of you uh, who are traveling. First, we see a bounce back, and we see a bounce back that is first domestic and short haul. And we saw it this summer. I don't know if, you, if you've looked, uh, looked at some, uh, some press release or articles, but you saw that, I mean, traffic, airline traffic is back, especially to touristic destina destinations. Greece, Spain, Portugal. I mean, you've heard about uh, this destination over the summer, but it's true for Middle East, Dubai, for instance, and Dubai might again be the number one destination, especially for European during this uh, winter season. So we, uh, we see this first trend to, um, to short all destinations. The second one is, um, is a trend where there is a rise of uh, travel towards destination with strong safety protocols. It's very important and we see it in our everyday life and it's very true in travel retail as well. Third uh, big trend is that, I mean, it's less mass tourism and more, uh, and more individual trips. And also we might see less business travel tomorrow. Uh, so people are going to travel differently. So the implication for us is to be ready to adapt the offer to the type of 
people we will have in airports. And this is why beauty for all travelers and the portfolio of L'Oréal is so important. Fourth trend, very important, especially when you talk to airlines, is flexibility. Uh, we don't want any longer to travel and, and not being reimbursed if there is any issue whatsoever with COVID, with new protocols in place when we are traveling. And this flexibility is absolutely crucial. And the fifth one, and probably the most important, is about sustainability. Um, it's really at the core of all stakeholders in the travel industry, from airlines to airports, from suppliers to retailers. We are all talking about sustainability extremely seriously, uh, because I don't know if you know, but I mean, the very first um, association we do when we talk about travel is, uh, yes, but I mean, traveling, flying is creating uh, carbon emission. Yes, it's true. Uh, but we just have to keep in mind that uh, the carbon emission created by travels, international travels worldwide, it's only between two and three percent of the total CO2 emission. So it's a lot. And we are responsible collectively to make it going down, down, down and disappear. But it's not the, the most, uh, uh, I would say, responsible industry in view of carbon emission. But it's very important sustainability. So what I do suggest is to introduce to you L'Oréal Travel Retail within this context. What are we doing? What are we uh, as a group uh, in travel retail? Uh, first, starting by our mission, because I mean, beauty for all travelers is our mission. Indeed, we want to give access to the greatest portfolio of brand uh, through unique retail expression and tailored and connected experiences. And this is what we are doing because you've understood. And I'll show you some images uh, right after. Uh, Travel retail, it's about image, customer recruitment, and you see it, it's a very well sized business. So L'Oréal Travel Retail is among, is among the global leaders of this industry. We have a 23% market share, but more than the market share is the strength of our portfolio. I told you from luxury like uh, the YSL uh, livre that you see uh, on, uh, on the screen to, to the mass market uh, from L'Oréal Paris or uh, the Air Salon Division with Kerastas uh, to the Dermos Cosmetic. And here you see Yalubi 5 from La Roche-Posay. Uh, we have a beautiful portfolio and the strongest of the industry to meet all the travelers' desire, demand, whoever they are, what they, wherever they travel. And for that, I mean, we are, um, and this is interesting because, I mean, I give you a bit of insight of uh, what is travel retail within L'Oréal. We have three subsidiaries, one in Paris, where I'm based, uh, with Travel Retail Europe, uh, and they are managing Europe, Middle East, and Africa, and India, sorry, I forgot India. We have another subsidiary in Hong Kong, in Hong Kong, where we are managing North and South Asia plus Pacific, and we have a third subsidiary in Miami uh, to manage Travel Retail North and South America. So we have three big subsidiaries, uh, the biggest one being Hong Kong, you saw the size of the market, and we are based in Paris. And at the same time, what's interesting is, I mean, we have, um, and it's extremely important in travel retail, and we pay attention to it all the time, is the team. The team we are building, the people you are working with. Uh, and it's very, very interesting to build your team. And, uh, and this is also something that is a quite a, a very important recipe at L'Oréal, is people. And L'Oréal Travel Retail is almost 900 people, but what's interesting is the diversity. Uh, we are the business unit with the biggest number of nationalities. We have 57 nationalities in our business units, uh, and it's very meaningful. We are very balanced uh, in our man comes, in our management committee between, uh, between men and women. So gender equality is well balanced. In the total of the employees, it's slightly different. Um, we are in a beauty, in, in a beauty market, so uh, we have uh, more than two thirds of our employees uh, that are that are female. Yet, uh, as you can see, we have so many great opportunities that we we are rebalanced depending on the métier uh, with male in our uh, in our business units. And last, and it's interesting as well because I think it's it's also another trademark of our activity and, and at L'Oréal Travel Retail is the average seniority within the group. 
uh, and it's between eight and nine years. Uh, and I think it's also meaningful because you need to build knowledge, but also you need to build people that are moving within the group. And I've been uh, by telling you my parkour quite an example. So, our subsidiaries, our people, and our brands. Um, I'm, I'm very often remind uh, who we are playing with uh, and, and where. First is L'Oréal Lux, and L'Oréal Lux is uh, the leading uh, division within L'Oréal Travel Retail uh, and the leading group uh, within L'Oréal Travel Retail with the name that you might know, uh, like Lanco, Marmani, Saint Laurent, Kills, uh, what we call our dragons, the big brand we are developing worldwide, but also all the others. And lately, I mean, I was very, very interested to see the development of our fragrances like Valentino, Margiela, Prada, Atelier Cologne, Azzaro, Mugler. Uh, these brands are bringing lots of innovation on the market and I are becoming highly successful. And this is the strength of our portfolio at L'Oréal Lux, this balance between skincare, makeup, fragrances that we are developing. And that's why L'Oréal Lux is, uh, is by far the giant division within Travel Retail. But we also have L'Oréal Consumer Product Division with one leading beauty brand, the number one beauty brand in the world, L'Oréal Paris, uh, that we are developing. And it's very much in tune with the development of the mass uh, travel, if I may say, or, or I would say the, um, the fact that the middle class is traveling more and more in the world. And by the way, you see it when you travel. Uh, you see the usual traditional high luxury duty free shops, but at the same time, in many places around the world, since you are going to be able to re travel again, uh, supermarkets or more accessible places. I could give you the example of Hudson in the US, where we are going to uh, create a partnership to develop uh, L'Oréal Paris and more mass market products. But what's interesting as well within the portfolio is that we are developing La Roche Pose, Vichy, Skinceutical, the dermocosmetic part of the of the beauty business, and it's so successful, um, and uh, it's very much related to this uh, search for authenticity, authenticity uh, dermatological solution uh, coming from professionals, and uh, and it's something that our travelers are also asking uh, in, in, uh, in airports. And last but not least, uh, we are also developing Kerastas, uh, the air salon division, the number one uh, hair care brand in the world, the most uh, selective one as well. Uh, and we have very selected airports. And I'm going to give you some examples, some photos. I mean, together, I mean, in, in five minutes, and then I will, I will stop the presentation and, and we will exchange. Um, I will give you a, a kind of a world tour of what is uh, L'Oréal Travel Retail, uh, because I mean, it's a lot about uh, retail excellence and beauty tech. Uh, retail excellence and beauty tech, because retailtainment when you are traveling is absolutely paramount. I mean, you want to be surprised, you want to be uh, served, you want to be seduced when you are traveling. And we are playing with pop-ups, experiences, exclusive events, or even sense of place offer when you are traveling. As I told you as well, we are playing on duty free as well, uh, e-commerce, digital activations uh, with new and disruptive partners. I mean, OTAs, it's uh, the online travel agencies. We do it a lot at the moment in China with Fliggy. But we are also discussing with Booking.com, TripAdvisor, Expedia, uh, these online travel agencies. Uh, and of course, we are uh, having uh, contact with our customers with different touch points. I was talking about live streaming, social commerce, digital media. Uh, this is the new tools we are using. Why? Because I mean, data is a new one. I mean, if we know our customer better, we will address them better. And when they will be at the airport, they will know that they can get a personalized service to enrich the interaction because, I mean, it's key, um, especially in duty free, to be able to be at parity uh, with what you can get on the domestic market. And then uh, if we share the data with our domestic market, we create a long term, a, a lifetime value uh, and a long term relationship. So as promised, and, um, I do suggest to do a very short world tour of the airports and uh, and uh, and the brands uh, of L'Oréal uh, 
uh, around the world. I mean, uh, since we have not been traveling that much lately altogether, uh, I, uh, I thought it was a good idea to, uh, to give you a, a quick overview. Here it's an example in Sao Paulo. I mean, uh, it's Lancome in Terminal 3. So you can see uh, clearly uh, the size and the importance uh, of beauty in an airport. Or it's Doha, it's the new Doha Cafe that opened last year during the COVID period. Uh, it's Armani in Istanbul. Istanbul is an amazing airport. Uh, if you have not been there, try one day. It's uh, the launch of Libre in Dubai. Uh, it was uh, it was here two years ago, but I mean, this is uh, what you can see when you are traveling. It's uh, here in Germany, in Frankfurt, it's the Armani counter. Uh, or it, in Oslo, it's, uh, it's a biotherm uh, space uh, that we, we can have. Here, it's, uh, it was the very first opening of La Valentino with uh, Voce Viva, and, uh, and it was uh, in GFK uh, that we, uh, we did it. Uh, it was a great symbol uh, with Lady Gaga. Uh, here, it's L'Oréal Paris in Singapore, uh, or another example of Dermocosmetic uh, in Rio de Janeiro uh, for Vichy and, and La Roche-Posay or even Kirasta that I was talking about uh, very, very recently. And here it's one of the biggest uh, uh, counter of Kirastas in airport. It's in Beirut, um, biggest in size and also in sense. Um, so um, this is for the airports, but we also have the downtown shops. Uh, and this is where I want you to realize what is behind downtown and travel retail downtown. Uh, and here it's in Hainan, this famous island uh, in the south of China. It's an island a bit bigger than, than Corsica, uh, for so, those of you who know Corsica. Uh, and, uh, and it's uh, the island that is welcoming these 19 million people. Here it's another example in Seoul. Uh, it's not HPP 360 LED screen. I mean, it's in Seoul. Uh, sorry for the... For the the name uh, or another example of uh, the Chinese New Year uh, in Hainan here for YSL or for Armani uh, in the operations the pop-ups I was talking about uh, or or L'Oréal Paris uh, it was uh, this summer uh, actually this one uh, we we had La Maison L'Oréal Paris uh, in Haipu uh, in the island of Hainan or it's another expression of uh, Armani in uh, in Seoul downtown this one was in, with uh, with Chin Zegi. Uh, Hainan again, and, and L'Oréal Paris in La Samaritaine. And for those uh, who are living in Paris, you can visit La Samaritaine, where you will see very interesting uh, expression of, uh, of our brands, and especially L'Oréal Paris that you see here. And Margiela, for instance, in Seoul, in Chinzege, uh, again, or, or in Hainan, uh, like, uh, like this one. As you can see, Hainan is so strategic, uh, that we have been playing all our portfolio there, developing all our, all our activities, and uh, and SkinCeutical is uh, is one of them. I wanted to thank you. Uh, I'm going to to get out of the presentation and to uh, to give by to give the mic uh, back to uh, uh, to Stephanie uh, for uh, your question and answers. Thanks a lot, Vincent, for this uh, very, very rich overview you gave us on travel retail. Um, questions are coming in, so people, uh, for all those who are still curious, please keep uh, keep posting your questions. Let's start with the first one. It is about skincare, Vincent. Um, so Talia says, we are seeing a tremendous increase of the skincare category, mainly because of the staying home last year. In your opinion, will L'Oréal be focusing more in this category rather than on makeup? Actually, I mean, uh, L'Oréal has always been focusing on skincare. Uh, and this is, this is our strength, by the way. Uh, and uh, and I told you, I mean, from luxury skincare, like premium skincare, it's a trend worldwide. We we can see it everywhere, uh, but it's also a, a trend for dermocosmetic. CeraVe, SkinCeutical, La Roche-Posay, Vichy uh, have been booming last year. And you're very right. It it was due to the COVID, but not only. Uh, and we we see it in in all our categories. Nevertheless, uh, and that's interesting, we see the, the, the rise of makeup again. Uh, and there is not yet a makeup fiesta, um, but it's coming back and, uh, and we will be equally looking at the development tomorrow. But it's true that skincare is, uh, is the name of the game at the moment. 
Thanks, Vincent. There is lots of other questions popping in. Mathilde is saying, thank you for the presentation. I wanted to ask what was the biggest challenge to address during the last year of the pandemic since there were less travelers around? So it's a very challenging one. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, but it's a very good question because, I mean, it's um, like in any business, when you are in a very challenging period of time, what you are doing with your team is you rethink the way you work. Uh, and uh, and last year it was very complicated because you had two realities, one in Asia and you had to adapt uh, to a new customer and in part in some part of the world like Hainan. So you have to readapt your organization or you have the Western world where the market uh, and the business was minus 60, 70. And therefore, I mean, your responsibility with the team is to reorganize. Uh, and uh, and to readapt your organization to a market that is falling by 60% and that is going to bounce back, but progressively. And this is what we did. And then you have to also adapt your portfolio, the way you work, uh, the field forces. Uh, and it's your responsibility as manager because, I mean, um, at the time of a big crisis, you have to take care of cash, cash management, uh, your organization, and to make it sustainable for the long term and to survive sometimes. And some of our retailers have been in very, very, very difficult situation. So we have had uh, a good partnership to overcome the COVID. Thanks, Vincent. Now we have a question related to something that you mentioned earlier in your presentation, and it's actually about Hainan. What does it make so strategic? Size. Uh, Hainan is, um, if I try to summarize, and it's, it would be too oversimplified, but I mean, I think it's very true. It's a, Hainan is a kind of new Hong Kong uh, for the Chinese community at large. And uh, and I don't know if you have uh, if I have Chinese uh, connected people here, but I mean it's uh, um, it's the only touristic destination for the Chinese. Um, and when you have an island where you have 90 million people, 90 million people, um, it's almost twice as more as the number of Chinese visiting Hong Kong before uh, before the COVID, before the protest, before all the, uh, the events. So it's extremely meaningful. And when you know that it's um, the number one nationality shopping in travel retail or in duty free, it's absolutely strategic. Um, and that's why, by the way, uh, Ainan, uh, has been created six years ago, more or less by China Duty Free. They opened a, a big shopping center in Aitong Bay. Today in Hainan, you find China Duty Free, Dufri, one big retail operator, GFS, Lagardère, CNSC. Uh, so all key players are in Hainan uh, because, I mean, this is the market uh, that is almost uh, almost the only one in uh, in the travel retail industry at the moment. That's why it is so strategic. And because, uh, and I add it because it's very true for all our activities, it's the image. I mean, the people, the Chinese traveling to Hainan, they sometimes discover the brand for the very first time. So what we are doing there, it's extremely important in view of image and recruitment. Thanks a lot, Vincent. Now we're going to go into another one of our favorite to topics, which is technology and beauty. What we call it is beauty tech. And um, they say that beauty technology is one of the driving forces of L'Oréal. How, if any, is beauty technology, for example, AI, implemented within the travel retail, besides what you had already mentioned or just and, uh, explaining in a little bit more detail what travel retail and beauty tech is all about? Ah, it's, um, it's, 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 I'm going to give you very, very concrete examples uh, of what we did over the past uh, 12 months or even more. Very first one, I mean, you know, after the COVID, everybody told us, I mean, we need to have contactless relationship with our customers. So we need to remove all the testers. So at L'Oréal, we've been able to come up with a QR code solution. Um, you are a customer, you take your mobile, you go on the QR code and you get information about the products, about the color, about the texture. Um, and we did it in many, many doors around the world. One example um, of technology in store. 
Another example is uh, is Modiface. Less attractive at the moment because we have less travelers and, uh, and on makeup, but it's virtual try on and makeup and it's absolutely fantastic. Um, uh, other example is a skin diagnostic that we have implemented uh, on Dermocosmetic, but also on the luxury brands like uh, Kiehl's, Lancome. And it's all this added value we give to customers when they are traveling. Because I mean, it's very important when you travel to have a service, this famous O plus O experience, uh, that is at the level of what you can get online. Because on, honestly speaking, today everything is one click away, uh, every type of service. So we need to uh, we need to compete in every retail space and in travel retail in particular to be able to offer customers and travelers the experience they deserve. And this is why tech is so important. Now we have a quicker question for you. It's about the competitors in travel retail that L'Oréal is having. So I don't know what question is about. I mean, uh, I can name the competitors. I mean, uh, the big names, the, the big competitor in travel retail, in beauty in particular, is the Loader Group uh, because of their strengths in Asia Pacific. Uh, but all the luxury brands uh, are our competitors. Uh, it's uh, Dior, Chanel, uh, Shiseido, Givenchy, uh, and all the others. Uh, but we are uh, we are uh, among the, the beauty leader like uh, like we are in, uh, in in many markets. But what's interesting if we talk about competition in travel retail, it's a um, it's a unique market uh, because it's a unique market. Why? Because all categories when you are traveling, especially in big airports, uh, but not everywhere, but in most of them, all the categories are in the same store. Uh, so it's a it's a fight for space between tobacco, liquor, beauty, fashion, electronics. Uh, so and this is where uh, it's actually uh, fascinating to uh, to play with the floor plan and to say, I mean, which category is going to bring the greatest revenues, the greatest customer experience, and this is where beauty. And you saw it is the number one category, and this is why we are fighting uh, in a nice way, but with all the retailers saying, I mean, we need to give more space to beauty. Uh, that's a big idea in travel. Thank you. Questions are numerous and coming in very, very quickly. Divya says, thank you a lot for the presentation. It was an absolute delight. And she would like to know if in travel retail there is every, anything we do differently to attract consumers compared to the usual retail. Uh, the first thing that we uh, we do is, uh, and uh, I was talking with uh, with uh, newcomers this morning, and they say, oh, yeah, it's true. When I was traveling, I mean, travel retail, I mean, it's very it's very great because I mean, you can't miss the shop. And this is what we walk, we call the walkthrough. Uh, you check in, uh, you pass security, and immediately you enter a duty free shop. Um, and this is uh, what is interesting in travel retail is, I mean, if you work hand in hand, travel retail operators, I mean, uh, with the airports, I mean, you can create this kind of uh, walkthrough shop. And it's very different from uh, what you can have in High Street, where, I mean, you have to decide to go somewhere. Nobody is imposing the way you are going to walk into, uh, into, uh, into the store. So first, the second thing, and this is what we are not doing in Travel Retail, and I think it's very interesting to, uh, to, to think about what you are not doing well. Um, and I don't know if, you, if you've seen it in the presentation, it's, it's about the data. Uh, because what's interesting is um, is to be able to talk to customers uh, before they travel. And here, I mean, it's uh, it's interesting because, I mean, uh, we have very little data versus the high street. Uh, the data is belonging to airlines, is belonging to uh, online travel agencies, and this is where we could be smarter uh, in talking to customers. Um, Thank you, Vincent, so many inspiring insights. And now Victor is asking a question, is touching, is opening a huge new chapter talking about sustainability. So he's saying during your presentation, you talked a lot about the commitment of L'Oréal to sustainability in the travel industry. And he would like to know if there is any specific areas of focus into that direction. If you could elaborate a little bit more on that. Yeah, many, many. And again, I mean, I'm going to give you concrete examples. Uh, 
Um, and, uh, and I'm very proud of what we did at L'Oréal at the time. I mean, it was five years ago. Uh, and uh, and when when we decided to embark on sustainability, we said, OK, we are traveling because this is the essence of our activity. Therefore, we are creating CO2 emission. And what we decided is to work with a company called Pure Project and to plant trees around the world in key locations. And we have decided to offset all the employees travel of L'Oréal Travel Retail by planting trees. That's one example. It's not perfect, but it's one example. Second example of, di of, of sustainability of what we will be tomorrow. This morning, uh, I've sent an email to uh, the CEO of China Duty Free saying, you know that L'Oréal, we are going to create uh, a circular economy fund uh, to develop activities, startups, companies uh, in this circular economy. Um, and we are, we are going to be the leading company of this fund. But we would like our stakeholders, our partners of this ecosystem, of the value chain ecosystem to play with us in, in this responsibility to develop tomorrow. And China Duty Free could be one of them. So I, I wrote to them and said, OK, let's do it together if you want to. That's a, another example. A third example is when we are developing travel exclusives, when you are traveling at airports, you see sometimes, and I'm going to quote airport de, Aéroport de Paris, Airportunities. Airportunities are products made only when you are traveling, and we call it travel exclusive. And we try to make it without cellophane. We've tried to reduce the, the, the carton we are using in these uh, products big time in order to be responsible. Or a fourth example uh, of what we can do as a business unit. Uh, to develop these products, we have to assemble products. Uh, and we are working with companies, uh, and especially one that I know uh, called Jad, where we are working with disabled people, and we are working hand in hand in order to be part of this inclusivity and diversity, because I think we are responsible of that. So it's plenty of examples we can find as business units. And when I'm talking to my team, this is why I tell them, you can have plenty of good ideas, bring them to us. Talk to your managers and we'll always try at L'Oréal to find ways to make it happen. Thank you, Vincent. I just learned a new word, opportunities. And thanks as well for sharing all the very specific examples. I think that's exactly the richness about these live sessions. You never can see or understand what the questions are going to be like, but then we discovered that it's, it's a real journey together with you. Uh, now we're going to go a little bit more into um, your history at, at L'Oréal as well and, and your career path. Lucy is asking, what profiles do you look for in travel retail? And second question, what motivated you particularly to join the travel retail industry? Hello, I'm going to start by the second question. Uh, what motivated me to join the travel retail industry? Um, absolutely nothing. Uh, it's it's it was it was by chance. I didn't know it's uh, and and you know what I mean. And I think it's it's very true at L'Oréal, but it's probably true everywhere. It's about encounters. When after after my cooperation in Belgium in finance, uh, I met people at L'Oréal. I've met people. It was a duty free at the time, travel retail, and I said I want to work with these guys. I mean, it's probably a great adventure. Um, and it was because 30 years after, I'm still in this adventure. Um, and that's why meet, encounter, uh, get interviews, and you will find uh, many great possibilities. Uh, and, and Stephanie, in charge of talent acquisition in France, is going to tell you the same. Come and meet us, because I mean, it's uh, at the end of the day by meeting people that you will find uh, incredible possibilities. And then what are we looking at? I think it's more a question for uh, human resources people, but I mean, um, I'm going to be a bit more general. Um, we are going to, to look for people with um, an incredible attitude in way of uh, serving people, uh, developing activities, being generalist, open to the world, uh, uh, with this idea of uh, diversity, um, of inclusion, I mean, uh, to be citizen of the world tomorrow. Uh, and we are going to train them for, uh, for all the aptitudes 
necessary either in business in marketing or in any part of our uh, our activity so we we i think i mean uh, and uh, i'm talking on my behalf but stephanie will probably not disagree uh, we don't have preconceived ideas and this is the beauty of uh, of l'oréal i mean we have uh, we have we are we have talented people everywhere with different horizon and uh, and coming from different origins well, talking about encounters and bridges, we have Stefan on the call and he's a former colleague of ours who says hello and thank you for sharing your expertise and experience. And he also shares that he himself has spent four years at L'Oréal Travel Retail and he says the best years ever. Now he's got questions for you. Um, how do you May I say thank you, Stefan? <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Stefan. How do you see, Vincent, the development of high-end ultra lux perfumery in travel retail EMEA in the coming two years? Um, in the coming two years, I think it's wrong. It's the coming 10 years. I mean, it's, uh, uh, again, we, we see it, uh, parfum d'exception, ex high-end luxury in fragrances or perfumeries. Um, they have been existing and they will be existing. Uh, and for me, the question is uh, really to adapt the offer. It's not going to be exclusive, uh, but uh, we will have a balance between, uh, I would say, uh, mainstream fragrances, mass fragrances, or let's call it lifestyle, and also high-end luxury uh, and collection. Uh, it's not just one of them. It's uh, the three categories together that are going to be extremely strong. There is quite a lot of interest in terms of what L'Oréal will be doing uh, to specifically work on products for, for men. And Amir asked that there's been recently a quite an interesting release about skincare products for men. And he would like to know if L'Oréal is planning to expand on this category, uh, because he says it's true that men are becoming more and more interested in taking care of their skin, but it is still, in his opinion, a little bit underrated. So, Vincent, what's your point of view? It's uh, L'Oréal has, has always been active on uh, on the men category. I will give you two two examples: Men Expert on the one hand for the mass market, and uh, and Biotherm Homme uh, in the, in the, in the selective market. Um, it's two very very strong beauty leaders, uh, and uh, and uh, and we have been on it. Is it underrated? Partly because I mean the market itself uh, is as is not booming, uh, but we have been active uh, for many many years. And we in travel retail, uh, if you are traveling the world, you will see a lot of spaces of biotherm uh, um, I mean in the airports uh, because I mean um, you know when you are traveling very often and you are looking uh, for a men's product, uh, very often the only place where you can buy it's at the airport. Uh, now back again to your career, Vincent. What are currently the biggest thing, the biggest challenges that you're facing in your job at the moment? The biggest challenge is uh, it's um, first uh, and sorry to be pragmatic, but the very first one was to manage the COVID crisis. Uh, and uh, and um, I've been lucky to work with amazing people around the world and they have been responding uh, immediately to the crisis. I mean, changing, streamlining, reorganizing, rethinking, adapting the catalog. And we have been doing it uh, despite the difficulty pretty well. Uh, second, I mean, uh, and, and I think it's uh, the challenge not only in travel retail, but everywhere is, is to keep developing talent, people, finding uh, the people, the talent of tomorrow, uh, because we are uh, we are a school um, in many ways uh, to develop uh, to develop talent for the group with with all this idea of diversity and, and this capacity to work in many, many markets in different uh, contexts with um, if you have a young, if you are a young area manager today, you can um, very often I'm saying that you are um, a very young general manager uh, because you can touch every aspect of a PNL, every aspect of uh, a business unit management, and a lot in human management as well with all the beauty advisors that you are managing in the regions. So I mean the challenge uh, is business and uh, and business continuity, uh, how to rebuild a sustainable business for the coming years, and this is what we are doing and keep developing talent uh, for the group. 
You touched about people, Vincent, and there is another question very much related to that. Um, the listeners and the participants would like to know what are your more important values as a professional at L'Oréal? Oh, the most important values. It's 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 very interesting, and um, and especially at a time where we are in um, in a in a kind of hybrid world, where we are uh, in presence, remote. Uh, it's very interesting, and for me, key values are trust. Uh, that's very important. Uh, clear communication, exemplarity. Uh, and uh, and I think it's uh, it's very very important in uh, in the world of today. Uh, at the same time, I mean I mean for me, and it, it's more general and it's not uh, travel retail in particular. Um, but as I told you before, uh, I mean I've been living in Japan for quite a while, uh, and I I do believe that I've been very much influenced by uh, by the Japanese uh, way of life. And, uh, and I've been reading, and I invite many of you to, to read about it, but it's uh, about the Bushido and the values of the Bushido. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's very, very meaningful even today. Uh, it's uh, uh, courage, benevolence, politeness, sincerity, honor, uh, loyalty. All this, uh, all this idea, all these values are very important. And I think it's, um, it's very true at L'Oréal, if I may say. Thank you for sharing, Manson. That's very personal, very inspirational at the very same time. Now, back to business. There's a lot of questions around, around e-commerce, around disruption of the business models. And Lamise is actually uh, saying that new generations of consumers are more and more volatile and engaged. And she would like to ask, according to L'Oréal, which major challenges we will be facing over the coming years to target these young generations while preserving at the same time our heritage and historical brand history? I think, I mean, it's, there, is no, there is no opposition um, to keep an heritage and to create attraction for a new generation. Um, and we, we, we can see it. Uh, I'm going to give you the example of Kiehl's. Um, I don't know if you know the brand. Uh, it's uh, the New York Apothecary, created in 1851, if I'm not mistaken. So, as you can imagine, there is a very strong heritage. And despite this age, it's so relevant for the young generation. And why? Because, I mean, we are not only developing our stores, our beauty stores and, uh, and, uh, and standalone boutique around the world, but it's all the work that is done behind digital, digital capabilities, services online, the way to talk to people. Uh, and, and that's why, I mean, I mean, the opposition of style, uh, I think is, for me, is not relevant. On the contrary, um, it's uh, the synergy of the two that makes the brand so strong. Thanks, Vincent. And we're going to take the very last question for today. If you had an advice that is based on your own experience and, and on, on your professional life, um, which one would it be to share with us? Be yourself in everything you do every day. And with this, I think that it is time to conclude this very, very special session. Thank you, Vincent. Thank you a huge lot for having been with us, for the great insights into travel retail, which is uh, definitely something that everybody of us was not as prepared as we are now. Uh, thanks for the inspirational words and thanks also for the very personal insights that you left us with. Thank you very much, Stephanie, and thank you to all the participants. Uh, thank you for listening, attending uh, and thank you for your time. Wonderful. Now, if for all of those of you who would like to listen to, listen to the uh, formal masterclasses, you can do so. Uh, you will see them all on YouTube and there is going to be a new masterclass coming up in the month of November very soon with another special guest speaker of L'Oréal. For those of you who uh, are interested in finding out more about careers at L'Oréal and who would like to apply, that's the way to go. There you'll find all the information. 
And before closing this down, once again, a very, very warm and special thank you, Vincent, for being with us today, for spending this afternoon, this morning, this moment together, and for everything that you shared with us. See you all soon on our next masterclass.